minutes after 11 o'clock. Wow, the day's going fast, isn't it? Uh, good interviews are the way we make our days go fast. And we have another great interview. Dr. Thomas Campbell is on the phone. He is an instructor of clinical family medicine at the University of Rochester School of Medicine and Dentistry. He's the director of the T. Colin Campbell Center for Nutrition Studies. He's a researcher and he has a book. The book is called The Campbell Plan, The Simple Way to Lose Weight and Reverse Illness Using the China Studies Whole Food Plant-Based Diet. So after today's interview, it's going to be almost time for lunch. I, I know of a great place to get a salad right next door to the mall. Yep. <laughs> and uh, I'll go get one. Uh, Dr. Thomas Campbell, good morning, doctor. Good morning. Thanks for having me on. You're welcome. Um, so plant-based diet. Do you know what you know what I like? I like those. Uh, what do you call them? Uh, like veggie burgers. I like those veggie burgers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of those now. Uh, some of them are some of them are uh, more realistic than others, depending on what you're looking for. But uh, yeah, they're pretty good. Um, well, where are you calling from? Where are you right now? I'm in Rochester, New York. Oh, that would make sense. That would make sense. Do you, do you know what I don't like, though? I don't like the veggie hot dogs. For some reason, they, the, the, whoever put them together did good jobs with the ha fake hamburgers, but not with yeah. the fake hot dogs. <laughs> yeah, I was at a place, and somebody got me veggie hot dogs one time, and they uh, grilled them up, but they didn't realize they were still shrink-wrapped in plastic. So <gasps> oh, <laughs> oh, well, God, maybe oh, that's I what I've been doing wrong. And you know what's really funny is that I didn't even realize it either, and so I took a bite in this thing, and I was like, oh, my God, what is wrong with these veggie hot dogs? <laughs> <laughs> so what, no, they're a little bit better than that. But <laughs> so, what is the China study? What is that? Well, it's a uh, a book that we wrote uh, with my I wrote with my dad uh, in 2005. We published it, so it's been a little while. And in that book, we detail uh, my dad's long career. He's a retired diet and cancer researcher, and uh, the work and research of other clinicians and scientists for a wide range of illnesses and disease. And, Basically, to cut to the chase, we're, we really make the case that nutrition is likely to be more important than many of us realize for both the prevention and the treatment uh, and actually getting better, you know, for, for many of our major diseases. And the best nutrition is likely to be what we call a whole food plant-based diet, which is admittedly very different from the standard American diet, but you're you're cutting down or right. eliminating animal foods, meat and dairies, and and the processed foods, the sugars, the oils, the uh, white flours, that type of thing. If my question takes us down a path you don't really want to go or, or if it's a curve, but th this question is based on another guest we've had some time ago, and he basically yeah. said if you increase the alkalinity of your diet, it'll increase the alkalinity of your body, and then you will never get cancer. So with those three things, what do, what is your response to that claim? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure there's a huge body of evidence for the alkalinity of your diet and, and, can, and cancer, but, for, you know, that very specific mechanism, I'm not familiar, I'm not familiar with, with that body of evidence. But, okay. Um, I, I do think that, um, you know, it, it, there's overlap here. Actually, plant-based diets, from my understanding, tend to make things more alkaline. So it's a, um, so it, it, so. it actually ends up being a similar, in many cases, uh, some similar messages. It's just, so if people, if, if, if a person is a true vegan, uh, do they have to take any kind of uh, supplements so they can have whatever nutrients the meat part of the diet would have had in their systems to keep them extremely healthy? Yeah, the only one is vitamin B12 that's mm -hmm. missing from plant foods. Um, the rest of the, and I would say probably not in your part of the country, but <laughs> in my part of the country in the wintertime, vitamin D is uh, is a worthwhile supplement to take. That's not really a, a food thing anyway, though. That's more of a sunshine thing. Oh. Um, yeah, you, know, you make vitamin D from the sunshine, so that, that's... It's, Which is uh, why the, the nudist camps all pr all say that in their advertisements. I don't know if that's... Really? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. They, we got a few of them. They say, get more vitamin D. Come visit us. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a great way to get vitamin D, I guess. <laughs> um, so anyway, the, the vitamin B12, but, you know, a lot of people are worried about missing out on other things like iron or protein or calcium, that type of thing. If you're really incorporating the healthy kind of foods that I encourage, you're going to be getting more than enough of all that stuff, and you're going to be doing just fine. In fact, I worry much more when I see my, my patients in my practice. I see very normal. I have a very normal traditional practice. I, I don't see it's not a nutritional clinic or anything uh, alternative, nothing like that. It's, it's uh, people who come to me for belly pain, blood pressure, whatever. 
Um, and I, I worry much more about the standard American diet because people are not eating any fiber. And we know fiber is important. People are not really getting any antioxidants or phytochemicals or uh, things that we know are really, really good. So, so yes, I do say a B12 is absolutely required um, and uh, vitamin D if you're not getting much sun. But um, the rest of it is the most nutrients you're going to find in nature are actually in plants. Okay, so if if we uh, if we had not, if we were vegetarians, not vegans, but vegetarians, we would uh, not need the B twelve. In other words, if we had eggs and cheese, mm -hmm. like, what is well, it? It's a little bit. I still say actually, it's it's B twelve is a very common problem even for those people who oh, are okay. eating meat. In fact, for older adults, um, you know, it's it's suggested that all older adults. Uh, from from some uh, institutions suggest all o older adults take a B12 vitamin, even those consuming meat, um, because of some changes I don't need to go into. But, How old uh, are we? When are we older? <laughs> well, I, I think that if I remember correctly, recommendation uh, is from 50 and up. Wow, we're um, older than older, Robin. We're older. Gosh. We're older than older. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, yeah, that's not even that's not even old. It's like, but you know, it's. Uh, Right. Uh, I, I, th I think in particular, um, in my own practice, in my own mind, I'm thinking even older, you know, uh, older adults. Um, uh, you use the word uh, simple, the simple way to lose weight. A lot of people like to hear that word whenever they are doing something that they deem to be hard, but you still have to go on an exercise regimen too, right? Well, exercise imp is important, but actually um, there's a interesting experience one physician who's published all his results in peer-reviewed journals looking at heart disease reversal the only thing he changed in his in his uh program for folks was their diet and there was no exercise component and he showed that he could re that these patients were re actually reversing heart disease and that was based on really? looking at x-ray images of blockages in the arteries it, it wasn't just a wow. lab test uh, looking at and seeing blo these blockages were shrinking so i i'm very fervent I, i'm a passionate exerciser myself i really um encourage everyone to exercise it's it's beneficial in many 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 ways it's vital it's important but i do think that the foundation of good health begins with the the fork and the spoon and so let's let me tell you i'm 60 now i was 22 years old uh when i had finished three years of being a vegetarian I became a vegetarian tw three years before I was 22, what was it, 19, or whatever it was, yeah. because I had heard uh, uh, Muhammad Ali say that um, he felt better, he had more energy, and he went on and on and on about all the benefits of being a vegetarian. Well, three years later, I was out in California and decided I would go to the Great American Food and Beverage Company and have a hamburger mm -hmm. <laughs> and, <laughs> and got back to eating meat. I never right. did feel any different. Right. However, now that I'm older, I have gone through periods where I would say, you know what, I'm, I'm just going to kind of be really light on the meat or no meat at all. And if I go for a week or two as a vegetarian, and I'm not a pure vegetarian because I will have meat, but I do feel better. So I think a right. lot has to do with age because Muhammad Ali was older at that time. I wasn't. Yeah. I was 19. Yeah, I, I, I see that all the time. I see people who are feeling great eating uh, more of a standard American diet and they happen to be younger and their body is still uh, compensating very well <laughs> yeah, yeah. for that. And, and, uh, and yeah, if you're feeling amazingly wonderful, um, you're not going to see, hey, let's be honest, you're not going to see, you're not going to turn into Superman. Um, but on the other hand, most of the patients I see aren't feeling so wonderful. <laughs> you know, they, they right. want to be on another pill. They're dealing with weight issues. They've got chronic pain and so on and so forth. And, and for those people, there's absolutely benefits to be had pretty quickly when they start changing their diet. Yeah, yeah. Do, do you uh, include fruits with the vegetables? I do, okay. absolutely. And is there, a, is there a, a, a formula, how many fruits per day? Like, don't fruits also cause you to be fat if you eat too many of them? Well, I, I say if you're eating whole fruits, so you're not you're not drinking all of your fruits. You're eating whole fruits. You, I don't have a limit on that. Oh, okay. I think that's, okay. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we need to take a little break, and we'll be right back. Uh, interesting conversation. If you want to uh, ask a question, you are welcome to do that. Dr. Thomas Campbell is our guest. His book is called The Campbell Plan, The Simple Way to Lose Weight and Reverse Illness. I think the reverse illness is what we've been focusing on the most, but it, obesity is an illness in a way, right? Isn't that what they say? Uh, yeah. So we'll, so we'll be right back. 
The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. It'll be mostly cloudy and breezy today with a couple of showers and a thunderstorm, the high 76 to 80. Clearing skies tonight, breezy and cooler, the lows ranging from the mid-40s in a few woodland spots to the mid-50s at the coast. Sunshine, breezy and chillier tomorrow, the high 66 to 70. Sunday, sunny but quite cool, high 66 to 70. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Are you tired of not using your home's outdoor space for entertaining or relaxation because of all the bugs and leaves? Consider adding a beautiful screen room or glass enclosure. We are Superior Aluminum and Design, a family-owned and operated business with 20 years' experience in the aluminum industry. And we are accredited by the Better Business Bureau. If you appreciate superior workmanship, call Superior Aluminum and Design at 817-8058 or visit us on the web at superioraluminumdesign.com. Here's what you may have missed on the John Tesh Radio Show. In a study involving more than 2,000 people, those with slimmer waistlines showed higher cognitive ability than those who were overweight or obese. Our pets improve our character and make us much better people. If your partner's the one who's stressed out, we know that you will be 25% more likely to be affected than a stranger would be. Yeah, be careful because stress is contagious. Intelligence for your life on the John Tesh Radio Show. Don't miss this stuff. Get it for less at the DIY Home Center Outlet. Get top quality real wood cabinets the same or less than the big box stores are selling the cheap stuff. And that's not all. Drywall Screws big box stores are $6.47 a pound at DIY only $4.99. Plus DIY has the largest selection of mobile home parts and accessories anywhere. From carpet to doors, get the DIY supplies you need for less. The DIY Home Center Outlet. We are your building material closeout store. 2191 Northwest 10th Street, just two miles east of I-75. All right, 17 minutes after 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Tom, uh, Dr. Thomas Campbell is on the phone. We're talking about your health. We're talking about losing weight. We're talking about plant-based diets. Uh, are you a vegetarian, doctor? Or I am. I, I walk my talk. I, uh, does, does that mean vegan or vegetarian? And, and is what is the big difference? Is it Well, you know, I'm, my motivation is mostly sort of health and medical. And, and I there's many ways you can go about this. You can be more, more motivated in... Um, for animal welfare or the environment, and and there's different. <laughs> it actually it gets a little bit goofy to be honest, but there's you know the 100 strict 100 percenters, and actually I I'm not the strict 100 percent. I'm I'm 99.9 uh, percent. Oh really? So it's there's the, it, it's not so much though. You know I I don't focus vegan and vegetarian is something that everyone understands, so it's an easy way to communicate it, but. I actually prefer whole food plant-based because it's more, I'm more focused on what I'm including in my diet rather than what I'm excluding. I mean, I, I, I do both, but I'm, it's more, because you can have a very unhealthy vegan diet. You can have, um, you know, a vegan diet that's Oreos and potato chips and, or, you know, whatever vegan cookies are out there. And that's not a healthy diet. So it's, it's also okay, yeah, what right. you're adding into your diet. Uh, you had referenced earlier fork and spoon, and we had uh, seen that uh, your book, uh, The China Study, inspired a, a documentary called Forks Over Knives. Uh, what is the significance yeah. about that title? Well, that was, that was uh, sort of play on words that what we eat, we, what we use with our forks for, is actually more powerful than the scalpels that doctors use. You know, you could you could eat your way to heart health, um, or you can lay on a table and have doctors crack your chest open and get a bypass. Um, and the fork actually is better for your heart than that. Oh than wow! That. So when you say it can re- your diet can reverse heart disease, does that mean uh, like the clogging of the arteries? Can that actually be un- undone? Yeah, absolutely. It's it's uh, you know as a physician it's um, it's a shame when people haven't heard that before but um, there's now been studies published and these are not this is not um, sort of pop culture information these are published studies in top peer-reviewed medical journals showing that advanced heart disease you can see reversages of the blockages in advanced heart disease oh wow diet, diet and lifestyle um, in this particular this type of diet. Ah, boy, now I think the phone thing is starting to do it. <laughs> I think it started to fade a little bit. Yeah, we had a trouble with the phone earlier. I hope we don't lose you, doctor. Um, can I give you, can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. See, before we went on, I, I, Rob was trying to tell you the other line phone number. And um, so if you, if you uh, 
go away. Can I ask? Can I give you the other number right now? Sure. It's uh, three five two six two two nine six two two. So if if we lose you, would you please call back on that line? But right now, I can still hear you. Right. Okay. Yeah, you starting to fade, but not too bad. Okay. So so um, if I decided today to give up all hamburgers. I don't really eat that much meat. No. Not no. really, but you I don't. do. I mean, yesterday we had a hamburger. Yeah, so. that was good. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> <laughs> it was really good. But, okay, so let's say I go for salads. Or, I mean, do you go for, is canned vegetables okay? Or, uh, how does... Yeah, you know, I, I think um, the best thing to do is to get a recipe resource and find a few things that you like. Listen, we're all creatures of habit. Think about all the different varieties of food that you eat throughout the week. And most people, most people have, you know, a handful of things that they go back to over and over and over and over. So it's a matter of finding the one or two things that you really like. And these, this is not, a lot of people think, oh, I'm going to get healthy. i got to eat salads all the time. I, I love salads. I like them. But actually, I don't eat, I don't eat salads all the time. I'm, I eat things like um, spinach lasagna, pineapple stir fry, um, you know, sweet potato enchiladas, uh, things that are that are actually pretty easy. Uh, some of them are one pot kind of things. Is there cheese in these things? No, no cheese. No well, cheese. You have, there's sort of cheese, cheesy substitutes in some of these things, um, but but you make extra so that you have leftovers and make it as easy as possible. But it's the point is that it it should be kind of comfort food, very filling. And, and enjoyable. It's, it's, it's not cardboard or just salads. Uh, this is a very interesting uh, revelation about the salads because people that are on blood thinners are discouraged by their doctors to eat salads and green vegetables that yeah. have any kind of uh, vitamin K in it because that will be harmful to, that, to them. Yeah, it's a good, that's a great point. And, and I actually um, sort of disagree with that, but I'd be very cautious for your listeners to to make changes in your diet with the with the obviously with the management of your doctor but there's actually an interesting study i saw where people who are taking in more vitamin k so more of the greens if they had a high baseline level their um their lab tests their their blood thinning tended to be more stable over time which is a big deal for for this particular blood center you're talking about so it's not so much the absolute amount it, it's not that you need to avoid vitamin k it's that you need to have a relatively consistent intake of vitamin k it's the consistency of intake rather than the absolute amount so um i, I have no I, I encourage people even on blood thinners to have a, a high plant diet but you got to be careful especially if you're changing your diet to do it under your doctor's supervision and um, and just make sure that you're eating a fairly consistent amount of of plants from week to week. Can you talk about drinks a little bit? Uh, not not just alcoholic drinks, but I mean all drinks. Uh, you you some. You, it sounded like you would shy away from juices and go for whole fruits. What would you be for tea, for coffee, what, or milk? I, or no, milk wouldn't yeah. be in your diet, yeah. would it? No, 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 no. Well, that, for the milk, the milk substitutes, I think, are really so easy now. You can get unsweetened almond milk, or if you don't like that, they that's have, great. I love know, that stuff. Cashew milk, soy milk, whatever. There's a whole variety of like things in the grocery store. Uh, but otherwise, in general, I I, adver- I advocate for water. <laughs> yeah. The sort of the forgotten beverage. Yeah, of, right, uh, right, right. You know, of, of human consumption, um, water, and I, I think tea is. I, I drink tea myself. Um, uh, but generally, I get a little nervous when people are drinking too many of their calories rather than eating them. Um, and I know smoothies, for example, and uh, you know fancy coffee drinks with all sorts of a- a- added stuff. Um, you know those things are pretty popular, and and I get a little nervous when people are taking in so many calories as a liquid um, mm-hmm. that that you know generally may not be filling them up as much as a solid food, and and so you can kind of get wrapped around a little bit of, of, I think, some weight issues for some folks in some circumstances with that. Do you have any uh, success stories you can share with us? Maybe somebody who, not just who lost an amazing amount of weight, but maybe they had a condition that went away, and, and uh, how long did it take? What did they actually do? Yeah, well, I had a, I had a, a patient who, um, sort of a, a middle-aged guy who came in and we checked his I checked his uh blood cholesterol level his his lipids and he uh he had very high uh cholesterol levels and 
we had a conversation. They said, you know, look, you, you're young now, but in a few short years at these levels, you're going to be on medication, and it's going to be I'm going to be pushing medication on you. These medications have side effects, and and most people take them for the rest of their lives. Um, but that's that's the direction things are going. And we talked a little bit more, and he realized that in you know ten years. Uh, at a point 10 years older than he was, his father had died from a, a sudden first uh, fatal massive heart attack. And he thought about and it, suddenly it clicked. And, um, you know, you think about these tragedies that happen in our families, and suddenly it was like, wow, my future is supposed to be longer than 10 years from now. It should, I, I, I don't want to live just for another 10 years. So he really took this to heart, and he changed his diet dramatically. Um, and his cholesterol dropped cut in half. It wow. cut by 50% uh, the next time. And this was within, you know, a few months. So it happened pretty quickly, and he just decided, you know, he's going to take up some new, um, some new foods. And he really had a remarkable, uh, remarkable laboratory result from his, from his changes. And, uh, you know, there's other patients who have lost the weight, uh, People who have dropped their blood sugar on diabetes, you know that 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 type of that type of thing. One of my favorite things as a doctor, I don't consider myself an alternative doctor. I see normal people and I follow the guidelines. But I, um, when I get the opportunity to, when pe- when people are changing their health by changing their lifestyle, one of my favorite things is to take people off medication. Uh, oh, that's got to be rewarding, yeah. Absolutely. So you know, the times I've when I have been able to do that, it's been. It's been wonderful. And that's a, a good thing that your book also does is that you doctor the emotional side of the human. And that is so important to, for humans to have that kind of reassurance that they're doing everything they possibly can to stay healthy. Right. Yeah. Behavior change is much more than just knowledge. You know, you can tell yourself you're, till you're blue in the face that you want to, that smoking's bad for you, but it's, there's many, many more important factors to changing our behavior. Well, and and having, I I used to smoke cigars and I gave them up. I used to drink coffee and I gave it up recently. I've been using uh, green tea now. And I've, gosh, it's made a big difference for me, those those two decisions. But the the struggle, like right when you first are Mm -hmm. quitting, you know, when you first said, okay, I'm done and it's a week later, that's the hardest part right there. I, I I think if you can get through three weeks, you can get through anything. Yeah. Yeah, it's a transition. It, the transition is what is hard. It's absolutely, you know, you're waiting for new habits and new tastes, and those things will come. I promise they will come, but you've got to, um, the transition can be unpleasant, and, <laughs> you know, until, until you get there. Um, and uh, the trick is to make it as enjoyable as possible. And with food, the good news is with food, you can do that. Healthy food is tastier than a lot of people a lot of people realize once they get find a few good recipes oh, you know yeah. it's not it's not a bad thing but yeah. um but there is a transition and the, the secret is get hungry if you the hungrier you are the better an onion will taste <laughs> yeah. oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh doctor this is a great conversation thank you so much for being on the air with us the book is called the campbell plan how do we get the book and do you have a website yeah i've got a website thecampbellplan.com and you can find the book everywhere books are sold now so uh, it, just, it just came out. I'm um, excited to be on your show. Thank you. Well, thank you. And uh, you're definitely welcome back anytime. Where did you say you are? Where are you calling from? California? Rochester, New York. Oh, Rochester. Okay, all right. Yeah. Well, if you're ever in Ocala, Florida, come by and uh, schedule another interview. All right, great. Thanks a lot. Thank you, doctor. We'll take a break. Bye. We'll be right back. German authorities say they may have uncovered clues into why the German wing's co-pilot deliberately crashed a plane into the French Alps. Prosecutors say that they found a doctor's note excusing Andreas Lubitz from work the day of the crash. They say they also found other sick notes, doctor's notes, indicating that he may have had some kind of undisclosed illness that he was keeping a secret, that he was essentially keeping hidden from the airline and his colleagues at the air. Our economy slowing in the final quarter. 2.2% annual growth rate.
rate. That was unchanged from the prior reading. A little short from expectations. Economists looking for even weaker growth in this quarter because of winter weather. Fox Business Network's Tom Sullivan and the Colorado woman accused of cutting an unborn baby from its mother will not face murder charges in the attack. The baby did not survive. The mother, who's about eight months pregnant, did. Fox News, we report, you decide. That's not a lawnmower. That's a zero-turning, fescue-slaughtering chariot of lawn domination, cup holder included. And like all respected machines, it requires a battery, which are now as low as $21.99 with exchange at Napa. That's $21.99 for a lawn and garden battery and the satisfaction of knowing the weekend warrior rides again. Conquer the job with Napa know-how. Participating Napa Auto Parts stores. Offer expires 331.15. The smarter way to manage business expenses. Presented by Concur. After my conference, I checked out of the hotel and the bill was automatically added to my expense report. Then I hopped into a taxi. I snapped a photo of the receipt using Concur and bam, there it was on my expense report. Then I used my corporate card to buy the client's lunch. Another charge added to my expense report. Expense reports that write themselves. Just one of the many ways Concur helps manage your company's spend so you can focus on the big picture. Take a free test drive today at tryconcur.com. The whole town's talking about that fabulous truckload azalea sale at Bob Wines Community.